Hello, everyone. This is Rick with the CyberPro Podcast. Industry leaders share their insights. It's about five questions in nine minutes because hackers never sleep. So let's get to it. Corey, who are you and what do you do? Uh, hi, I'm Corey O'Daniel, co-founder and CEO of MassDriver. MassDriver enables developers to self-serve cloud infrastructure and services in a secure, and compliant, and auditable way. Auditable way. Auditable. Sorry. Oh, and auditable. Auditable. Yeah, auditable. Yeah, I'm like, I'm sure of it. Yeah, honorable. I was like, honorable. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, honorable. That bit of responsibility about what you're putting in the cloud. <laughs> that's that's awesome. That that's sweet. So, as a yeah, you know, this is kind of a two part question for you because you know you you are in the security space, uh, you're in the software space, but you're also an entrepreneur. So, why do you love being in the security space? And 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 take that one step further. Why do you love being an entrepreneur? Yeah. So in the security space, I mean, honestly, it is going to sound, there's a, there's a weird answer, but like it's the tinfoil hat. It's being aware, like underneath that tinfoil hat, like there's a bit of paranoia, but there's also just like, you just, you, you just know when to trust something or not. Like I, I see my family members like text me stuff constantly and like, is this a scam? And I'm like, I can't imagine living like that's a, that's the real paranoia. I can't imagine living that way where I'm like, I got to text somebody before I click this link. Um, so like just, just generally being a aware of how things run in the cloud and how our systems work is comforting to me. Um, now, geez, what do I like about being an entrepreneur? Um, uh, stay it up 18 to 20 hours a day is probably the number one thing there. Um, uh, no, it's, it, it's, it's really fun to like, to work with the team. I've got a great team of engineers. Uh, I'm an engineer myself. Um, it's, it's great to build something and see our customers become fanatics over it. We are trying to change the way people manage cloud infrastructure. Um, and we're a part of this platform engineering movement that's it's starting to take hold. And it's it's just exciting to see people see what we're building and change the way they do their development and get excited about it. Well, awesome. I appreciate that answer. We hear cybersecurity or security or especially cloud security is a top concern. But what does that mean to you? Yeah, this is one I struggle with. Um, so like the gut is, oh, shifting everything left. Shift, so let's shift security left, right? But when you look at like, like polls from Stack Overflow and Gartner, what you see is there's a fair number of engineers, like 90% of engineers that don't have cloud experience at all, right? They've worked in big companies where they haven't had to deal with it directly or they've worked with passes. If you look at the engineers that have security experience, that number's even smaller, right? And so I think like the idea of like, like what's the what's the big concern there? It's like, I'm concerned that we're just saying shift it left because we've done this before, particularly the DevOps, like we shift the accountability left, but we're not shifting the expertise, right? And I think that, you know, as we move forward to this like world of platform engineering, we need to start building systems that have security in mind from the get-go. It needs to be important to the business, not just compliance-led. And that's a lot of what it is today, right? Like a lot of our security is very much compliance-led security. And I think that product teams also need to have some sort of visibility into what security is, right? A product manager's goals aren't aligned with the goals of an engineer building a secure system, right? They want a button that clicks faster, that buys more stuff, right? And I think we need to be incorporating security into our sprints, making sure that product managers have a means of being able to evaluate security, whether that is security members on their team or some additional testing as it's going through the QA cycle. But like we, we need to get the whole team more involved in what security is and do more to teach engineers how to do this stuff themselves instead of just saying you're DevSecOps now. <laughs> nice. I'm going to add a slide in an extra question. Do you think by being a compliance led security worldview today that we're playing catch up and that, and that is there a better way? I mean, we're definitely playing catch up. I mean, we're, we're unfortunately going to be playing catch up for a while, right? I mean, there's, I mean, it's like when you think about, like when you think about, our system today. And you think about like the startup space, like kind of going back to an entrepreneur, like we get compared a lot to a lot of other tools. Like they'll say, oh, like how do you compete with 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 Sneak? Or how do you compete with this cost management tool? And it's like, when you look at our industry, there's a whole bunch of symptom solutions out there, right? Because cloud infrastructure is so hard, there's these whole other sets of businesses that exist to try to make this one part easy, right? 
And like that, like, like, like that is, that, that, it just creates more problems, more, more stuff you have to build, more stuff you have to connect. Right. And so, you know, that's really one of the areas that I think that we can do better in and in just building our systems in general, like starting to get that stuff in sooner, starting to make people understand how it works. So they're not just thinking about like, what are the compliance requirements I have to do? Is this thing encrypted? Is it encrypted? Flight? Check, check. Great. I can ship my feature. Like getting engineers more familiar with how SQL injections work, right? It's one of these things where it's like, we don't think about it a lot because our ORM says that it checks the box, right? So I don't have to understand how it works, right? But like you start to get to these points where it's like so many of these tools are doing the thing for me. I don't need to understand it anymore. But it's when you start to bring those tools together that you can find some of the cracks where there are new security issues that aren't quite solved by your products because it's it's in the it's in the coupling parts that you're hooking together. Thank you for that. I know I threw that at you. That's a very succinct answer. So go to that official fourth question, as it were. What insight do you want to share with our network of cyber professionals? Yeah, so a recent Gardner study shows that 80% of orgs are going to be moving towards platform engineering by 2026, right? And there's already a lot of companies that are starting to invest in it. And they're seeing it as a way of scale and DevOps within, within organizations, right? Like there's not a ton of cloud operations expertise out there. How do we get teams better at DevOps? And if we start to do these platform engineering teams that are building systems internal, encapsulating a lot of the best practices for how to ship our software like that just becomes better software easier to ship but what we need to do in doing this is again like going back to like the lack of security expertise in our industry right like it's a rare skill set that's fantastic for our salaries but like we need to be able to scale security like we're trying to scale operations and cloud infrastructure management and there's a lot of companies that are talking about platform engineering today and if you go through their site you don't see the word security and like, I think that this needs to be a cornerstone of what we're doing. We cannot do the DevOps thing again, where we just kind of come out, have 20 different definitions of it and hope everybody gets it right. We need to have a better manifesto of like what this is and what teams should be using to kind of watermark how well their teams are doing platform engineering, how security is a cornerstone in those systems and not just an afterthought. Love it. Corey, fun question for you. Final question. What's your favorite piece of retro technology that makes you smile? Okay. So this one was like the hardest one you sent me. And it, it not, it's not for like the reason where somebody's like, oh, this guy's the uber nerd. I'm like an anti-nerd. So like, I'm not a big fan of like, I, I'm, I don't have like a thousand computers. Like I'm not, a, I'm not like an Arduino hacker. I'm very much like my favorite piece of technology is probably, uh, this sweet base over here, that one's 30 years old. And that piece of technology out there, which is just a tree. Like I love getting away from my computer, but if we're going to keep it to technology, it's the dumb phone. And like, I've been trying to figure out like how to detach myself from my phone uh, so much. And it's like, I wouldn't start looking at some of these like dumb phones that are out there and they're like too dumb. They're like too dumb to be useful. Like, like I, they don't have maps. Like I need, I got kids. I want a camera up that's, doesn't suck but like that's about it i need maps a camera that doesn't suck and like that's really it so like like i long for the days of just not having something beeping in my hand in my pocket that i'm constantly grabbing getting hangnails from like reaching into my jean pockets all day long like that's what i want um so if anybody is out there making a dumb phone just make it like make it like maybe not so dumb not so dumb uh that that's what i'm looking for i love it i love it and 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 i will say this I, I would have been fine if you had stuck with the base because I think that is a technology that people don't realize is technology. I mean, yeah. you know, you went from this stand-up base, which was its own technology, to this really cool electric base that, you know, just keeps rhythm, just thumps. So both of those are awesome, but I think you had it on, on the first tries. Yeah, I've already had all that. That's a, that's a beautiful, uh, the one in the is is... 30 something years old. That's, uh, I think it's a 91 Fender Jazz bass. It is, it is a beautiful, beautiful thing. One of my first guitars. That's, that's awesome. Corey, thank you so much for being on the Cyber Pro Podcast. Yeah. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you for watching the Cyber Pro Podcast. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on new podcasts and bonus content.